Come join me as we hunt for cosmic geckos. Welcome to SETI Astro. So I took 120 three minute exposures for red and green, 90 three minute exposures for blue, and 48 15 minute exposures for hydrogen. So I have a total of 28 hours and 30 minutes. This turned out to be a bigger challenge to process than I initially thought it was going to be. Uh, here's the red. Even with all that exposure, it's not too discernible from the background. Here's the green channel. Blue. And hydrogen. What's really interesting with hydrogen is it looks so different than the red channel. There is quite a strong hydrogen signal, which is completely different than the continuum red. So here's the hydrogen again, and here's the red channel. In the red, there is just a, a faint line kind of running up the middle, but the hydrogen is just totally different than the continuum red. After removing the gradients and running blur exterminator, I did run my continuum subtraction utility such that I can do a continuum subtraction on the hydrogen data and get the pure hydrogen signal. So here is the here is the pure hydrogen signal. You, you could see that cone shape right there in the middle and then the big wisps coming up and uh, plenty of hydrogen structure off to the right as well. The hydrogen was very gaseous looking uh, unlike some other nebula where there's just huge amounts of structure in hydrogen. This was very wispy and, and gaseous. Combining the RGB channels, now you can start seeing the gecko here in the RGB, uh, and it's just really not that bright, and the star field is very dense on this. Removing the stars, uh, you can see what I had to work with here. Uh, both Star Exterminator and Starnet 2 left a huge amount of stellar remnants that uh, needed to be dealt with, right? If if we want to make a good image, it's it's just part of the part of the processing process. If you have a dense star field and uh, our AI tools weren't able to remove the stars very efficiently for us. Prior to uh, dealing with all the blemishes, I, I did stretch it and adjusted the contrast. Uh, such that I like the gecko itself. And you see that red up through the middle here too. And now it was a matter of turning loose my blemish blaster on it and just let it go to town. And just some repeated steps to remove the big stellar remnants. Finishing up any final remnants and tweaking the contrast a little bit. This is where I ended up here with the gecko in the continuum RGB. So then the other item to do is take our RGB image and our continuum subtracted H alpha image and combine them. I wanted the hydrogen to really go into the red channel. So I screened it solely into the red channel to give us our final starless RGB and H alpha combined image. The stars themselves presented uh, their own unique challenge. I have a, a doublet acro that I shoot with, so there was a very strong blue halo. I did use my Halo Be Gone script to tamp down uh, some of the, the blue halo, and I also used Fame to isolate some of these brighter ones and tone down the chrominance in them such that they weren't as strong blue. Adding the stars back in really just gave it a lot of depth of field. And here is my final cosmic gecko image. Hydrogen alpha continuum subtracted and RGB combined. Now right off the bat when processing, you, you can't help but notice this cross-shaped object down here. And that, that was one of the first things I did is just what is this thing? So I pulled up the trusty what's in my image script and, and just searched. And it is, it's a lot of cool little objects right here. It's this emission line star. 
a Harvig Hero object. It's in this Reflection Nebula. So there, there's a lot going on right here in this, this little tiny structure. Another object that I was looking at was this little galaxy off to the upper right here. Unfortunately, Simbad has nothing for it. But you can do a deep search and you could find it in there. And it is listed here as a Gaia point source. And digging in further, it's actually uh, also identified as this YZA galaxy. But there's no redshift or, or anything to it. So it is a fairly unstudied object. Another object that really piqued my interest over here in the left, it, it looked like a reflection nebula to me. Uh, so I, I did a query for it and it's, it's not a reflection nebula. It's an active galactic nucleus candidate, which just is very strange to me that, that this particular object is actually a galaxy. It just has that kind of wispy look that a reflection nebula would have, but no, it, it has redshift. Uh, that's probably why it looks like a reflection nebula is there's an active galactic nucleus in there, uh, just tormenting that, tormenting that poor galaxy. And there's just loads of other little galaxies all throughout this image, which, which I find just, just amazing, right? All these, these deep images. And I could go ahead and scroll around and, and look through this for a long time. It's just so cool that our tools we have at our disposal now allow us to image and explore right up to the right up to the cutting edge of what's even known out there and then performing the mast search query in what's in my image yeah hubbles hubbles also image that harbig hero object and using the mass search i could download the the hubble raw data right right to pix insight so it, it downloads a zip all you got to do is unzip it and and pull out the uh the fits so this is this is cool this is Hubble's image of our our little X down here, right? The uh, the rotation's not the same, but I think it's just so cool. I've updated Astrobin with my Cosmic Gecko, including the Starry and Starless versions. I have all my acquisition details and location in the sky, a quick write-up, and then some close-in crops of the Harbig Hero object, a tower up in the tail, our active galactic nucleus candidate, other galaxies, and uh, the continuum subtraction of the hydrogen data. I've also updated my website, setiastro.com, with our cosmic gecko, zoomable images, close in crops, link to Astrobin, and you can click the main ones to get uh, full size images. I hope you liked exploring my cosmic gecko with me. I would encourage everybody to use the what's in my image script to really dig into those objects and see if see if Hubble's imaged any of your, your objects within your own images. Please comment, like, and subscribe.